I think I'd like to start with um, if you could introduce yourself, Christos. Okay. A bit about your background. I your try. <laughs> so my name is Christos Papakostas. I was born in a uh, town in uh, central Greece, in Thessaly, in Larissa. My parents' origins uh, is from Kartitsa, still in uh, Thessaly. Uh, as far as I remember, I dance. I dance in a folk dance group, I dance in Eglindia, in, in the Panigiria, in uh, family gatherings. My, I got uh, my first degree in uh, 1991. Uh, as a PE teacher, but in our uh, in Greek academic uh, tradition, uh, part of the curriculum in the, the School of uh, Sports Science and, spo and uh, Physical Education, dance is a, ver is a very important part of this uh, curriculum. So I specialize it in the Greek uh, traditional dance. Uh, then I directed uh, several groups because I studied in Komotini, up north in Thraki, in Thrace. I moved in drama uh, in order to do my field work for my PhD. So 2007 I got my PhD from the University of uh, Thessaly, from the Department of uh, History, Archaeology and uh, Social Anthropology. Mm. And my dissertation uh, was about a gypsy uh, about the music and dance phenomenon in a gypsy village uh, near to the Greek, uh, the Greek Bulgarian uh, borders. Three years ago, I, I landed a position, it's a position to be appointed <laughs> in the University of Athens, but due to the crisis, we're still uh, we're waiting for that. Uh, I, I travel a lot uh, in Europe as a dancer, as a musician too. I play percussion. I joined many musical bands in Greece, traveling in Europe, uh, but I have uh, my first um, very positive and good uh, experience in the States 2012 uh, uh, because I joined the, uh, in the FDF as, as a judge. Well, um, now I also lived for eight years in drama in Macedonia. And now I live in Epirus in uh, in Yann for the last uh, four years. So I was more familiar with the uh, northern part of Greece, but I travel a lot mm. in uh, several uh, regions. Well, it, it's exciting to hear about your background, and it's even uh, a greater honor for us to have you with us today so that we can both exchange ideas uh, and to uh, really get your opinion as to what the Greek American communities are trying to do to, to maintain a, their cultural heritage um, and, in, in essence, a tie to, to the motherland of Greece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I, I had a question about how you got involved with FDF here in the United States. Well, the, the board uh, in 2012 invited me, actually, they uh, the FDF board contacted the Greek Minister of Culture, mm -hmm. and the Greek Minister of Culture uh, uh, proposed for uh, Irene Luzaki, a very well-known uh, Greek scholar, and me. So they sent the, uh, the, the formal invitation, and uh, we joined the uh, the. Uh, the judges' uh, staff uh, in 2012. Okay, so to go back to what Peter was talking about, mm. can you just comment on what is going on here with the FDF and mm. how that's contributing to the Greek culture and the, the history of dance and maintaining it here? Yes. Uh, it's a big discussion. <laughs> First of all, for a strange reason, not for a strange reason, I mean, uh, the reason is obvious, we are on the same page. As a scholar, as an academic, but as a dancer and musician, uh, now I have a lot of material. I have interviewed many, many people around FDF, musicians, 
directors, dancers, uh, judges, because my next project is to, to write something about the FDF. Mm. Actually, I have a, a small piece, an academic paper, still working on it. Uh, I, this paper is most about the sense of research through the YouTube, because I got a, a postdoc about the, the dance phenomenon through the, the YouTube. My case, my case study is about the FDF, how the directors, the FDF directors doing their research. It's a small piece, but I think it's a very good start. But uh, go back to the main topic, I was amazed. I couldn't imagine that 3,000 people, 2,000 kids, even though geographically where Greece is, exactly is, have never been there, dance. And they have dance many different and various local idioms. I mean, Greece is a tiny, tiny country, but according, according to the tradition and the folk culture, it's huge. It is. It's huge. There are very mm -hmm. local idioms, versions, sub-versions, sub-sub-versions, so which means it's very nice. And I was amazed was how powerful was this event, how the parents connected, the church connected, and, and the passion that uh, all the kids have, and the directors. And because my PhD is, PhD is about uh, dance identity, how the identity connect, uh, with, um, connect to the dance, it's amazing how you can, you can cultivate or improve or construct a, Greek, a new Greek American identity through the dance. It's amazing. It's a very good, not, me, not just a medium, it's a cultural form who has many, many abilities. You, I, you I described it extremely well. Um, and um, it is a phenomenon that uh, we have young people who may have never been to Greece, who in many cases are second, third, and fourth generation Greek Americans, still enjoying, embracing, yes, uh, and feeling the connectivity that dance brings to an individual who's performing of uh, the historical perspective mm -hmm. and meaning of the dance. What about the aspect of competition? Is that, do they do that in Greece or what do you think of that part of it? Well, many colleagues of mine I have uh, placed a, a criticism about the competition. They're very critical, very skeptical about that. As a person, but as a scholar to both. First, I would like to see it and then to have my own opinion. So, you live in a very competitive society. Very much so. So, it makes sense to me. If this foundation works th in this way, keep it that way. This is my, my very th first uh, thought. I share that with many friends of mine now, here in California especially. Made total sense to me. But after 38 years, I have, I th there, is, there are many, a lot of alternative ways to keep the competition, but pay more attention to the social thing, to the cultural thing, maybe a library, uh, a library online, a camp. Because, you know, it is the circle of the year, the President's Day, that is very important for the Greek Americans, especially the West Coast. Maybe th every three or four months, a small, a, a small event could be happening to, to improve the whole, uh, the whole thing. And who knows, after years, year by year, maybe uh, all the directors and uh, the parents and the parents and judges be more, more calm about the, the competition, to be, pay more attention about the dance itself. But from my experience, the last, in 2002 and 2013, most of the kids was, was amazing 
γλέντια in the, in the corridors, in the lobbies of the hotels, which may, is, I think is the highlight. And for, for me, I, I have this discussion with my, my colleagues, in, uh, the judge colleagues in, uh, in FDF, I can't score. Like it's, it's very, I, actually, I, can, I cannot uh, forget that many colleagues, oh, you, your scores are very high. What do you do? Yeah. I can't score. I have a little child, six years old. The grace for, uh, for her, for him, is it's imagined place, imagined place. In his imagination, it's a mother, it's a motherland, but in another totally different sense. And through dance, present himself, himself in an audience, have a common language with our kids. So I don't know if can, can uh, you, someone can uh, score on that. <coughs> on the other sense, I return back that uh, living in a very uh, competitive society makes sense to FDF working uh, in this way. You, you raise a very interesting uh, point, and it is, a, it is an, uh, an area of discussion that has gone on for a long time. Um, competition uh, is, in a essence, what brought FDF to where it is today. Had it not been for that element, uh, there would have been no, in, in English we would say, a carrot yeah. to attract people yes. to want to take the time to learn, to study, to become informed about the dance. Uh, there were many issues over the years. What is kefi? What is original? What is not original? All of those issues pretty well have disappeared uh, in terms of the debate. Um, but the, the area of competition is a healthy one uh, in that it does stimulate interest to want to excel, to want to perfect uh, not only the knowledge of the dance, but to perfect the, the movement of the dance. Um, the debate will not end. There are many people who have a, an enormous aversion to competition in this country. <clears throat> and it is, it is a, a, a it, in, in my opinion, it is a very uh, dangerous opinion to embrace. Mm -hmm. Because life is competition. From the day the child is coming through the birth canal to be born, it's competing for its life. And every day till it dies, it is going to compete. So instead of looking at competition negatively, embrace it as a tool yes. to teach, and this is really a critical point, to teach the magnificence of both losing and winning and to appreciate the differential. Why did they win and I didn't? And could I be a winner if I want to? There are some marvelous lessons in terms of our character, how we deal with success, how we deal with failure. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with that. And, and so, uh, but, so the, the idea of competition as being a negative element, it, it shouldn't be. And unfortunately, we do have an element that uh, I, I remember a doctor in Tucson every year would come up to me and say uh, the competition was bad. And, um, yeah, and I'd say, and why? He said, well, my daughter cries. And I said, well, what are you doing to embrace your daughter to tell her, well, next year, do better, to come back and do better? Uh, we've also, through competition, uh, watched how young people have matured. I, I remember there was a team one year in the advanced senior category that um, won a third place medal. Uh, the next year they came back and they won a second place medal. And the following year they came back and they won first place. By now their, their egos, their arrogance, that we are extraordinarily good dancers. And the fourth year they came back and they took a fourth place. How humiliating, but <laughs> how, what a learning tool that was. Life lesson. A tremendous lef lesson. And I remember having a discussion with that team saying, well, you're, gonna, you're going to tell us next year what you're really made of. You're going to either come back and dance, not because there's a medal here, 
but to demonstrate your maturity. Well, mm. it's very interesting. They, they, f they did manage to come back, and yeah. they won sweepstakes that year. <laughs> so so there's, an exciting, there's an exciting aspect to it if we will look at it in the true perspective of what we're doing here. Are we just teaching people to win a medal, or are we teaching them life lessons? To fight that dog. Okay. Yeah. So, and to respect. You see, it's, it's not only winning and losing. It's my respect for you that you did such a great Living job. Job. It's an admiration. And likewise, it's an admiration that I showed up, even though I lost. Mm -hmm. So these are some... And, and, and some, for some people, it's too subtle. Others get it. But the message in the years that I was involved, and that was the message. That was one, we had many messages, but that was one. It isn't about beating somebody. It's about demonstrating your commitment to excellence. Anyway. Well, uh, kind of along those lines, um, you mentioned that in the PE classes, physical education classes in Greece, they, they teach Greek dance. Is that still the case? And yes, it's, uh, it's mandatory. Yes, it's yeah. mandatory. I mean, uh, uh, some uh, is a very strong uh, part of the curriculum among the other sports, and we have a sport, uh, a, a very specific department. It is. Uh, Sport science and physical physical education I have four departments in in Greece, five, and the last two years, students who like to follow Greek dance specialize it because all the the lessons is around the, the Greek folk culture and the Greek folk dance, music uh, repertoire, um, teaching, and you know it's Greece is totally different case than the other Balkan. Uh, countries. I mean, for historical reasons, not by chance, uh, the Greek uh, paradigm, the Greek example, is not like uh, Bulgaria or uh, Yugoslavia. They, 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 we didn't follow the Moise uh, way of thinking, the over-choreographed or uh, yeah. the so theatrical uh, presentation. Well, you're absolutely right. The, what destroyed that component was the political elements mm -hmm. in those countries. Yeah. Uh, and they destroyed the natural element, the village element, of of dance. I mean, that's what we see we see in Western Europe uh, after World War II that uh, almost the disappearance of many of the folk dances of of France and Germany and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, these countries because it had a bad taste in the citizens' mouth because it was used from a political perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Is Greek dance then, say you're in Athens or anywhere in Greece, is it still just a, a normal part of the culture when people get together or when they go to clubs? Is it is it Greek dance or? Both. There are mixed. Both. There are venues that uh, still in, Greek, in Greece these days. Maybe uh, Tavernas who play uh, Pontic music or Cretan music, in a sense, new, new age podium. Uh, yeah. or new age Cretan music, from Epirus. Well, on the other hand, we have the Greek popular music. It's, it's very hard to define the boundaries between the, the Rebetico and the, the popular. It's a little bit of uh, traditional fusion. Uh, but, you know, the dance is not about the gender and the authenticity. If someone would like to dance, express himself, herself, in a way he likes, I don't bother. I, I really like it. It's not about the steps. Right. It's, it's, it's not a competition, it's not a performing group. So I think, and now due to the crisis, I think the people join the folk dance groups, which are very, are very strong, but five or 10 years ago, the dance phenomenon was almost like a line, because it was a little bit stuck. Now due to the crisis, people return back to the groups, Join, not for the steps. They're doing excursions, right. going parties, Glendia, potlucks, have bringing food, hang out, talk each other, and you know share the same problems. You know it's 
they're carrying all the same the same wages all all this it's something kind like of sharing what were those other two after i didn't know what those two words were after Body. what what okay it's uh, um, uh, traditional music for, for of the refugees coming from the Asia Minor and the Black Sea. In the other places, I, the, is the Kriti, the Cretan dance idiom. Oh, okay. But the, the types of gatherings were like parties and that you were referring to, where they're dancing now? They're dancing a lot of different genres. There are places, they're doing more popular Greek stuff, mm -hmm. or more traditional, Again, the context totally is totally different, but during the summer season, many regions in Greece, like Crete, Crete and Epirus, have acting the old way, more or less. I mean, have the Panegyria, local events, local <coughs> festivals, around the, the, the ascent, a big celebration, and they dance a lot for one or two days, in the meaning a lot. And even, even the domestic immigrants, the people who uh, lives, uh, live in Athens, go back to the villages around this date because it's very important for the community. Uh, and the, <laughs> the anthropological term for, for this is uh, symbolic reconstruction of community. They gather together to, that's, to that's a great. That's a great description. Yeah. It's uh, the scholar who Going this uh, this that's term is, is absolutely he was gorgeous. <laughs> it, that's that's an absolutely powerful no. No. Uh, analysis. What uh, what Christo is talking about with the economic decline in Greece, uh, what was happening was a lot of people who moved out of the villages to go to the big cities uh, were returning to their villages because it, there was a safety zone, there was, there was a home, uh, the home was paid for, uh, there was f uh, access to food. So it was, we would use perhaps the term, their Linus blanket, that when things were going well, they didn't need. So very interesting, I, I, I love that phrase. Is there a, di I'm just trying to understand more about dance in, in Greece and how it relates here, do they, are they aware of the FDF um, dancing over here? Is that something they know about in Greece and they welcome it, or is it? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, among my colleagues, I mean, not in the academia, uh, dance directors in Greece who have the chance traveling, and uh, they, they do know about the FDF. Not a lot of, a lot of people or have heard about something about the FDF. But during all of these years, the board invited many, many times yes. people from Greece, uh, scholars, uh, the famous directors, to join the, as a judge. So there is a, a network, f which for, for me means a lot. It's a bridge. Yeah. It's not a little bridge. It's a link. <coughs> but there is a story behind that. Uh, I think is FDF, maybe I'm wrong, this is my point of view because I have some a theory about that in my mind. You know, California uh, was a pioneer place for folk dance. Uh, very innovative. Back in the 50s and 60s, a lot of students in Berkeley or UCLA joined the uh, dance ethnology uh, programs that were open-minded and they use the dance as a medium to understand the other. And they travel a lot to the Balkans, travel a lot like Anna in, in, uh, in Greece and there were some kind of like ambassadors about the, the Balkan, the Mediterranean culture in, gen in general and many people in Greek culture. So FDF offered the chance these two different worlds to, to connect. Yeah. They were not in the same page all the time, but uh, it was a very, very good chance at least to start a debate, starting talk. 
Different mentality on the other the one place, different mentality overseas, but you know, the dance still is the, the it's thing. The, it's the common ground. Yes, it was, the common ground, yes. It was the core that gave them a, a means by which to engage in the debate uh, and to bring them together. Your, 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 your description of a bridge is excellent. Very early on in FDF's existence, we really felt the need and the value and the importance of reaching to uh, our friends and colleagues in Greece to bring them here for a couple of reasons. One, to let them know that we have not forgotten our roots. Two, we need your help uh, because we didn't have all the experts. We had a lot of outstanding people who, Ethan Karras and uh, uh, Mary Kouris and John Lilius and, and 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 then our our friends who were not of Greek ancestry, Anna Sirota, uh, Don and Ellie Hyatt, uh, and people of that nature who were absolute philohellenes and lovers of dance, uh, coming together to help help us. So, but the bridge was critical to us. We we felt there was an absolute need how to do this and how how we thought to achieve it was to bring people like yourself over uh, to be judges. And yes, some came, some were amazed as you were, some were inspired, some were critical. Okay. But on balance, uh, it left an indelible mark on the activities of what are going on in this country uh, in terms of pres preserving an incredible folk art form. Because we have you here and you're an expert on dance, I'd um, just like to hear you comment on the dances of Greece, and I, that's a huge topic, but say the circle dances versus couples dancing, if you could kind of characterize those, and, and maybe in a way to narrow that down is in terms of the, the students who are dancing at FDF and why it's important for them to learn both types, or is it? Mm -hmm. Well, first, um, not only for the dance, or the Greek dance, just I have a, a small piece of knowledge. Uh, and it is not uh, about, uh, for modesty, it's a very small piece of, of uh, knowledge. Uh, and I learned many things in FDF. I was, uh, I became wiser, in a piece of force, uh, how the dance functions in the FDF. So, first, in Greece, as I mentioned before, still the Greek phenomenon is very active, very strong, and we have a lot of dance forms, and I say that not in terms of superiority, no, that offer to a girl, to a boy, the chance to express himself, himself, and express, not only express, as display uh, emotions, feelings, mood. Of course, just to, to put uh, another topic here, it's, from my point of view, Greekness is not about the, the blood. It's a so cultural thing. So stop. It's not about blood. So dance, it's obvious that dance offers a stage, a scene to see that, oh, it's a dynamic phenomenon, still going on, a very fluid, subjective to judge. So I, I, the, now in, in the FDF, I interview many, many three conversations with directors. They are very strong involved. They are volunteers. Yes. I'm a professional. I mean, I'm starting as a volunteer, I'm still loved to dance, but this is a different thing. They evolve for, uh, from uh, late August to February. They are on fire. They do Greece sets, call everyday people in Greece. How do this dance is? Give me some videos. It, you are very lucky because you have people around in California, like and George, many, Joe, John, many people. I don't uh, like to forget 
someone of them that can help them and have their own network. But during this process, they did not realize that it's a very strange kind of hangout, a very strange way to be together. So in the, in the, in the FTF, during the competition, they are very dedicated. Everybody wants, would like to win. Okay. Uh, as we say in Greece, they don't want to lose what is the totally. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't like to, to, to lose even the, the background. If you compete, you would like to, to win. Of course. Uh, but the level, as a professional point of view, the level is very high. Very, very high. It is not a compliment. I told you, uh, I told you my colleagues, uh, the judge colleagues, that have many in the advanced senior, yeah. the groups are more strong. There are many groups in Greece. Yeah. Uh, even in this, the, the smallest categories, uh, primaries, advanced seniors, they are very strong in terms of staging, in terms of researching of the material, whatever. Uh, now the, the big, <laughs> another topic about authenticity, about originality, yeah. make no sense. Authenticity, no, the, this is an authentic moment. Right. If we are tomorrow wearing the same clothes and say the same words, it's a different moment. So authenticity is very, uh, it's very fluid. Some of the time, times, that's why I have many, not conflicts, different uh, points of view. What kind of dance we judge? Which period? Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, historical period. Uh, but it's also it's very sub sub subjective. The criteria is very, are very, very, very sub subjective. But uh, the main topic is that the year by year, the FDA are getting very strong and the, the quality of the performances it's uh, very, 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 very strong. Very, they're very, very beautiful. It's very, and it's still, it's very hard to decide. It's very hard to score. It's very hard to, to judge. No, you, it's you, very close. Very no, close. You're, you're absolutely right. It is subjective. Yeah. It, is, it is an emotional reaction. If you're a judge, you also have your knowledge of the dance, but you also have the emotional aspect of it and are going to react accordingly. I agree with that. Yeah, it's it is. Uh, you, you are we are human beings. No, we're not exactly. Yeah. Computer PCs now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I asked um, pretty much everyone I've I've spoken to so far about the term kefi, and I read in one of your um, papers online that wasn't in Greek, so I could actually read it. And and you had quite a long piece of, about that on your Roma paper, and I just mm -hmm. wondered if you would comment on the role of kefi in, in dance and particularly here of course in the US. The role of? Kefi, K-E-F-I. Ah, kefi, ah, kefi, okay. Oh, kefi. I don't know if I said it right. It's a kefi, kefi. Mm. It's kefi, it's keif in, in Turkish. Uh, you can describe, it's impossible to analyze the term uh, even if you are Greek or you, you live in there. I mean, you can describe uh, with words, definitely not. It's an emotional situation. It's emotional reaction. It depends on the context. <coughs> who, you are, who you are, who is your friends, who is your condenses, who is your place, who is your, your birthplace. Uh, which time of the year is, for instance, the Easter dances are very, how do you say, it's very... Uh, they're they're, they're um, solemn. So, yes. Solemn would be a good word. Now, because why? <laughs> because it is a, the highest holy day mm -hmm. of the Greek Orthodox community. We're, we're dealing with the, the reliving, if you will, the reenactment, if you will, of the crucifixion of Christ, the 
movement within dance is going to be inspired by that that emotional time. So I face dances uh, process <coughs> is a, a product at the same time. Uh, so uh, concerning my paper, it was uh, very important to me as a person first because I I have done my field work uh, in Egyptians in Roma, a marginal ethnic group, Greek self-oriented, but in the margins of the society. And you know the common stereotype is that most of the Egyptian populations are travelers. In Greece, are not. Most of them are settled, are sedentary for centuries. And Roma in Macedonia doing Roma uh, Macedonian dances in Epirus, Epirotica dances. Right. So they they connect with the majority. And th the, this case study helped me to to define how flexible is the dance, how f and how fluid, and how dynamic. Depends on the historical context. Reflect the society and the opposite. It's like a mirror. The society looks at the dance, and the dance looks at the, at the society. So uh, for me, uh, it, for seven years, uh, it was very important years for me to realize what about dance, and to rethink what about the, the, the concept of authenticity, what about the concept of purity. This is, a, this is a under consideration all the time. The problem with both of those issues is that <coughs> there was nobody around to be able to record what the dance looked like 100 years ago <laughs> or 200 years ago. And dance is an emotional act. And over the centuries, other elements within that dance have been introduced, whether it's a step, the way you hold your body, the way you move, uh, maybe even the way the music is played. And so, at least again in my opinion, that the use of authenticity is a very problematic, very problematic. Yes, yes. Yeah. it is. Uh, uh, enjoyable for the moment to say, that's how they danced that dance yesterday. But even yesterday to today, yes. there is an element of change. And then again, that makes the whole thing that much more intriguing, doesn't it? That's why I, I involved with the social science. I would like to have uh, an answers, not fixed answers, yeah. but a sense to figure yeah. out what happened with dance. But that's an important science to be involved with. Of course. To evaluate, of, of course. To evaluate dance. Because on the other hand, in very certain historical points, uh, times in Central Europe, uh, because of the Cartesian way of thinking, yeah. the dance, uh, they divided mind and body. In our, in our it culture, it can't be divided. No, it cannot. It cannot. Dance is not you know, meat and bones. It's another thing. No. I was wondering why more people who are not involved with Greek dance at all don't, why it isn't open to people to observe it and maybe get interested and caught up in it and, and want to dance is... This is a nice point, Pant. It's a very nice point. I think the foundation, from my point of view, could be a little more open. Uh, but Peter knows better. I, this is my, my, for my, this limited experience. Because there's many, no, Greeks, but makes sense. Uh, you try to build a uh, Greek-American identity. Uh, and first of all, you have look inside of you. Look at your own thing. I think by the time uh, will be changed, in a sense. Uh, but it is no problem someone to, to attend the, the FDS. Oh, yeah, no, yes. it's, o it's open to anybody. Yeah, it, it's just that. Like we follow <coughs> sports here, like tennis, and, and we don't all play tennis, for right. example, or mm -hmm. golf. Yeah. So I thought this is these are these really very accomplished, especially by the time they're they're in high school and older, dancers, and nobody knows about. I don't know. I just thought it was really fascinating. It's an interesting question that you raise, but I think that you, even though there has some elements of 
the athletics where people watch football or baseball or whatever. Uh, dance is a very cultural, emotional thing. It's not a spectator sport. It is. So you think you can dance as a popular TV show? Well, people like to watch dancing. <laughs> they they do, uh, and you may have you may have hit on a, on a on a very sensitive nerve that maybe we're not doing a good enough job telling the outside world. Uh, the magnificence of what this program is all about. Uh, you're giving me a lot of food for thought on that mm -hmm. on that question. Yeah, you 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 absolutely. Uh, you you you've, you've touched upon something that's uh, has has a lot of significance. A significance in the sense that dance is, uh, Christoph said it well. It has nothing to do about the your your bloodline. Uh, dance transcends all of that. Uh, and so why wouldn't it be something that... I, I will say that it's not a question that some of us didn't try. Uh, we would try to get the media interested. We would try to get the local newspapers to print about it. Sometimes, some years we were successful, other years not. Um, nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, I think we still average ten to 15,000 people show up to see it. Uh, but maybe we really haven't done a good enough job. Maybe there's a stronger message for the general society about uh, the uh, value of folk dancing, or regardless whether it's Greek or, or, or si mm -hmm. Serbian or whatever, or the value of folk dancing. You, you know, it's, it's, you're making me think about something. When I was in, when I was in grammar school, uh, it was required of the fifth and sixth graders to learn to folk dance. That, that's been that's been gone now. They don't they don't even do that anymore. And I'm, I'm now thinking about that. What a tragedy. What a what an element that we have lost in society. Great question, Patty. Thank you. On the other hand, there is every five or ten years. Maybe I'm wrong. We have dance trends. Yeah, we do. Bass to sixties uh, was the rock or the the folk, the, Bal the Balkan, uh, the Balkan dances. Now for instance, African and Zumba things. So, decade by decade, we have new trends. But in terms of Greek dance and the Balkan dance, or you know, the Mediterranean in general, the Mediterranean communities. There are a lot of stereotypes still that are very, very strong. I mean, yeah. the general stereotype of the Greek dance is Zoropa the Greek. Right. Uh, because of the, this, the great success of the, uh, mov uh, the movie of Kakuyanis, 1967, and the music of uh, Miki Sotorakis, spread out over the world, and the, the stereotype of the brave Greek doing Sirtaki and Rechina and Suvlaki and Tzatziki, the same, the same story is the, the tango or the, the salsa or, and, you know, it's, was the Hasapiko, then to switch to, <laughs> to Sirtaki, but it was for an ethnic group from, uh, the people come, came from the Asia Minor. It was connected with the, the, all the parts of Greek. It's not bad, but, you know, the, the dance is, on the other hand, is very good for touristic purposes. Uh, it's not bad too. But not in terms of ca some kind of cultural exoticism, like a natural dance, National Geographic. Right. It's very colorful, right. like the costumes. And okay, let's let's go to the Six Stars uh, Hotel and hang out. Well, how FDF begins? Well, the, the, the idea. Well, it, it, that's a great question. I've been asked that many times. Uh, there are there are a number of issues. Um, I was living in Los Angeles, uh, and uh, I had some uh, clients of the Mormon faith. Mm -hmm. uh, it was either 1970, 71. The Mormons actually rented the Rose Bowl, which is a football stadium. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a weekend of not so much competition, but weekend of square dancing. 
uh, and uh, my wife and I attended, and um, we were watching all of the, there were some 5,000 kids square dancing, and square dancing costumes, they're, they're colorful, not to the artistic level mm -hmm. that the mm -hmm. Greek costume is, but they're very colorful. And you could see these kids dancing, and I said, turned to my wife and I said, could you imagine 5,000 Greek kids in all of the various costumes from Greece in the base of the Rose Bowl dancing Greek? Uh, almost four years later, I'm, I find myself living in San Diego. And we had one church. Uh, the closest Orthodox church, Greek Orthodox church to us was Anaheim. Uh, and that's a almost an hour and a half, two hour time, time frame. <clears throat> and uh, we had just uh, started a food festival, as most churches in America now, Greek churches do. And um, they were putting wanting entertainment, so they would uh, rent uh, uh, dancers from the intersection out of Los Angeles, which mm -hmm. was a famous. Uh, a nightclub, uh, a dinner club uh, where Greek dancing was performed quite regularly, and some dancers from Oakland, and they would bring them down to San Diego. Uh, I arrive on the scene, and the local community, the parish priest, had heard about my background in youth activities and asked me if I would uh, be willing to take on the youth program at St. Spiridon's. Greek Orthodox Church. And so in that process, um, because we had no other Greek churches and our kids had nobody else to mingle with, to get to know, mm -hmm. uh, we began, uh, began to think about how do we get these kids to meet other kids. And the experience of what happened in Pasadena with the Mormons came back very vividly in my mind. And we began to talk about, well, why don't we try to start a folk dance competition. And of course, the, many of the kids said, no, 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 I don't, I don't compete in dancing. I dance from my heart. I said, well, I understand that. We all dance from our heart. But how are we going to get people to come? Are we going to just say, come and dance for your heart, or come and dance for something a little more? And so uh, once we got through that initial debate, we began to establish a program. And the first year, uh, we had five teams, 39 dancers from f four different communities. Uh, well, today that has ex expanded to several oh, thousand right. dancers. And uh, in some years, we've had as many as 110 teams uh, competing from different parts of the world. We've had, we've had teams come all the way from Australia. We've had teams from Brazil, Argentina, uh, Chile. We've had teams from uh, Cy Cyprus, uh, from Thessaloniki, uh, who have come to participate mm -hmm. in the FDF. Uh, so uh, that's how it, that was the impetus. Well, then once we got started, uh, we, uh, we did a couple of things. Uh, in America, what's happened, young people in my generation, when we were growing up, we were exposed to business concepts. The, the first business concept a young boy uh, at nine or ten was delivering newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, today that, that function has been taken away from young people. Uh, adults do that. So now that young man has lost that concept of a responsibility to deliver newspapers to people who subscribe to it, to go collect the money every month for selling you mm -hmm. the newspapers, and then having to take his money and buy newspapers to deliver. Okay. <coughs> so that's been taken away. And so, and many other things like that. Uh, uh, when I, before I had my paper out, I would water the neighbor's yard, cut their grass. Uh, I, I would get a whopping 25 cents for cutting the grass. But that was, again, an element of teaching responsibility, teaching an element mm -hmm. of business, of negotiations, those things have been stripped away from our youth in this country. Uh, what they've tried to replace it is with athletics. Well, athletics is fine to a point, but there are other elements of society that are critical in terms of how do we 
teach our young people about what life is about, what responsibility. If I promise to do something, I do it. And if I don't, what are the consequences? So we then said, let's take FDF, and besides being a dance competition, besides being embracing our culture and, 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 and creating a, a bridge between us and Greece to expand upon this culture, how do we teach it, use it as a tool to instill management skills? How do I manage something? How do I raise money? What do I do with the money? How do we handle all aspects of sitting down and negotiating with a hotel or a convention center? And so our whole program really was based on not only the cultural component, but teaching young people standard, Sick. typical <laughs> business skills and the responsibilities. And so uh, that's where it, it it elevated itself. We kept adults out of the program. Uh, we, we would not allow adults to have anything to do with it. And, and we would get criticized heavily because our program grew to be, uh, had an annual budget of $700,000. And adults would come up to me and say, how can you let this <coughs> 14 or 15 or 18 year old be responsible for this kind of money? And yet young people, when you demonstrate you love them, demonstrate you trust them, never let you down. Problem is we adults corrupt our own children. We don't trust them. We don't help them become responsible. Only one of my 30 odd years in running the program, only one child did I have to dismiss. <coughs> one child. Only one. And they all knew the rule. It's okay to make a mistake. Do not make the same mistake twice. Because if you did, you didn't learn, just leave. Don't ask me to tell you to go. So, so FDF was far more than just about dancing. It was about taking a core of young people every year, teaching them how to sit down and negotiate a contract with a hotel, negotiate a contract with a convention center, how to negotiate with beverage and food on the food, uh, if you had any ec extracurricular activity, which we do at FDF, how do you do that? How do you negotiate that? How do you, how do you go find them? And, uh, and then some of, the, some, of the, uh, some of the exciting things that happened, uh, I used to write letters uh, on behalf of kids that were on the management, we called the management team. Mm -hmm. So if a kid was, uh, had started to work for somebody, I'd say, well, give me the name of your boss. And I would write a letter to that boss and say, by the way, I don't know if you're aware, but Christos is the manager of blah, blah, blah under this program. And here's his budget for his part of it. And here's what he's doing. Invariably, and then I would also invite their boss as a guest, come mm -hmm. to the weekend, see what Christos is doing. Invariably, I would get the same reaction from their manager or their boss. They say, we had no idea they had that talent. Something like yeah. recommendations. Huh? That's exactly what it was. We had a young a woman um, in Oakland. Uh, she was the, was that year she was the executive director. She worked for a very large ice cream manufacturer, Dryer's Ice Cream in America. But she was in the, uh, she was in the finance department, but she was a lowly clerk. So I write her manager and I write the president of the company and I invited them both to come and see, and I gave them the entire budget of what mm -hmm. Amy was overseeing. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy, very quickly after the, that year FDF ended, had three promotions. The president of the company had no idea she had this kind of talent. So the program had, as again, I'll say it, many components to it and many powerful components to it. Uh, but um, it, some of those components are not there today. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I told you before. I know. Many, many <laughs> questions. I, it's like, you know, for the, my I'll review Peter next time for about two or three days in a row. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. I, will, I would love to. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of stories to tell. 
a lot of experiences. Um, the judges, uh, the judges were critical to the success of the competition. Without the judges, uh, you do not create the intensity, the intrigue, the uh, desire to try to do your best. Mm, of course. It did something else. The judges also were teachers. They also, in the process of evaluating a team, also became a teacher. Because they would write comments. Uh, they would talk to the judges, the directors. The directors no. uh, they would visit them. Uh, and so the synergy between judging you and educating you became very, very powerful. And it wasn't, in most co sports competition, the judges have nothing to do with this the performance. Time, time. Very distant. Mm -hmm. That was not our intent here. The judges had a, a very specific role, not just to put a number on a piece of paper. Your role was, I have to tell you why I scored you this way. Yeah, I realize this. Okay? Yes. And, and if you want, I'll come and help you. And I think, I don't think any judge would deny that that probably was the most powerful, one of the most powerful aspects of why the dance that you saw, how well it is performed. <laughs> I mean, I, I, two years ago, I, I, I went to see uh, Doris Strato dancers. And, and, and please take it in the context. I, Doris Strato is one of those who kept the flame alive in her own way. Mm -hmm. Okay, Whether you, you liked her, whether you didn't like her, it didn't make any difference. She put herself on the line to keep something going. And I'm sorry that Greece, the government, doesn't say this is a historical thing. Why can't we make it a showcase? So anyway, we went and saw the dancers and I said, my God, any one of our advanced senior groups okay. could have put on a performance. <laughs> no, no. It's very unfair to compare the two things. Yeah, it, it, it isn't. But I wasn't being a bit... Uh, <laughs> but it... it um, anyway, it's... Uh, 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 the judges played a major... And to this day, play a major role. Yeah. 